Well, that's Matariki. Some of Aotearoa's finest acting talents come together to honour a selection of Māori and Pacifica literary stars. Upu Maifetu is a collection of poetry curated by spoken word artist Grace Taylor. She and director Fasitua Amosa join us now to tell us all about it. Welcome, you two. Yes, welcome. What a pleasure to have you in the studio. Um, Grace, first of all, can you tell us a little bit, bit about your background? How did you become a spoken word artist? I mean, what's what's the background to that? Yeah, um, well, I'm a poet and just a lover of words. Been writing poetry for quite a while. You now. were a youth worker first, though, weren't you? Yes, yes, I was. Um, been yeah doing youth work out in South Auckland and with Māori and Pacific young people for the last twelve years. So. Yeah. And what got you into poetry? Was it listening to music? Because that's where most people start. Yes, it was. And I cannot sing, but oh. I love <laughs> lyrics. I absolutely, like, that's my thing that I focus on when I listen to songs. So. Oh, nice. So who did you used to, like, who did you used to write it? Um, well, Book Runga was definitely a big songwriter for me that I admired. Um, ben Harper and Kurt Cobain, actually. Well, you can actually <laughs> take any of their lyrics and remove the music from it. Mm. They're still phenomenal pieces of work, aren't yeah, they? definitely. They really are. Okay, Fassi, mm. well, you've been in here a few times. <laughs> Between everything you do, do you even sleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yeah, yeah, but it seems to have like something going on all the time, yeah. And have you ever worked with Grace before? Yes, we did a show a couple of years ago called My Own Darling, which was turning Grace's a work, a body of Grace's work, into a theatre show, which was the first time I engaged with poetry. Mm. And then I realised that I had never engaged with poetry as an, I've been acting for eighteen years, and I suppose we get stuck in our little holes of like you know screen and stage, mm. and we do our little thing. And I realised after doing the show that poetry is awesome and it's such a, like a great medium, and it's something that I never engaged with. And so when we took her work and turned it into a theatre piece, it was the first time that Grace had to take a poem and, and apply theatre techniques to it, which we realised, oh, these are very different things, you know, mm. and we work with the same things, we get on stage, we say words, we tell stories, but they're very different kind of mediums. And so that was really fun, turning Grace's poems into a three-act kind of show that went for uh, an hour show for um, Auckland Theatre Company called My Own Darling. And so that's where the genesis of this idea came from. I thought, well, poetry is awesome. I'm an actor. I like to say good words. Um, Grace does good words. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and so many, I mean, as actors, we've all done terrible plays. We've all done, you know, performed terrible writing, and it's like, it's no fun. Um, but with poetry, you're, you're, you're more guaranteed to have a, a better time as a performer because mm. I think with poets, spend far more time. Uh, selecting words and selecting mm. the right words that go together True. and I keep saying to people like um, you know poets can say more with four words than an actor can say in a, in a monologue yeah. do you know what I mean because it's you know and with poetry it's so efficient and so lean like a song whereas in theatre you just professionally Blow. beat around the bush you know yeah, like you, do. Yeah. you sort of dance around the <laughs> issue until you find it whereas poetry just cuts straight to it that's nice. true isn't it Grace the thing is though too with poetry is that a lot of people's memories of poetry is their fifth form selves writing mm. in their journals and you know getting all angsty <laughs> but do you think poetry gets sometimes a bit of a bad rap like people People don't embrace it because they think, oh, it's it's too traditional or it's too fancy. Yeah, yeah or it just becomes this thing that's like, you know, quite bougie or, you know, there's yeah. a certain aesthetic to it. But um, I think with spoken word poetry, which has been a quite a big movement that's been led by young people in this country, um, it's kind of brought poetry into a more accessible form. Yeah, and Instagram yeah. quotes as well. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and this must have been quite a different work because uh, my own darling, it was about your sort of single single motherhood, wasn't it? Yes. So that was your own work. This time you're cr you're curating other work. Mm. Uh, how did you choose the poems to use? To be quite honest, it's hard because Pacific writers and Maori writers is such. I mean, there's amazing wealth to draw from. So um, yeah, it was quite hard to choose, but it was just selecting the ones that. That I could, you could, we could see on stage. Right. That could be really um, fun to play with for mm. a, for a performer. And also to sort of when we started this was like, okay, where do we start? If you know, if you're going to pick from this whole pool, this, uh, we thought, okay, let's try and start from the beginning as much as possible. So mm. this round of uh, with my feature, we're going back to the old school. You know, like you're finding the trailblazing. You know. Um, Poets and find them. We thought well, let's start there, and then you know, in the future, we could start getting you know, when the young poets and people start coming through and with their own bodies of work, and then we can start sort of moving yeah. forward from there. But we thought we'd start, yeah. So then you've got the works, okay? Mm. So you've selected those. Then who is going to be doing the performing of the works? So we have uh, Mia Blake. She's Brilliant. Come up from the We've got Railway Paratini, uh, Nicola oh, wow. Kawana. Um, yeah, Heto Ahi from the um, Naked Samoans, um, and uh, Anna Corbett, and Gabby Solomona, and uh, 
Unfortunately, uh, someone had pulled out, so now I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so uh, yes, and, and myself. So yeah. nice, and, and that would be actually quite a responsibility. So mm. you're mm. looking after other people's work. You've got these stellar performers performing it, including mm. yourself. How did last night go? Went well. Went yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. It went really well. Yeah. Do you yeah. get nervous when I imagine if some of the you know relatives of the poets themselves are in the audience? Yeah, yeah. well, we had um, there was a, a, a Albert, Albert Wentz, Wentz so there, and Ben Brown, who's another one of the poets that were performing. Um, we've got a poet from Selena to Southern Marsh. Hopefully, she comes out. Uh, you know, so yeah, it, it is a big responsibility yeah. for everyone to go. You know, you can't get it wrong. You know, you can't um, you can't mumble around <laughs> things if you forget you know like so it's been a really good challenge for the actors as well because mm. uh yeah we don't get to perform poetry a lot and um it's it's very specific and it's a very uh, lean uh text so it's it's good fun and, and a good practice yeah brilliant i love how you brought it all together though you know you two obviously love working with each other mm. yeah yeah we work well <laughs> together <laughs> <laughs> and grace i think your dad might have even made my school shoes or designed them at oh least back goodness. in the day because yes, your dad was a designer at the old famous clark shoe factory yes. wasn't he yes oh my goodness <laughs> and I, used to wear, I used to wear clark shoes so there were a lot of people <laughs> yeah. that have that have actually probably worn your dad's shoe designs that is, that is as did every other every other <laughs> child in New Zealand mostly. <laughs> um, Grace, I'm really curious. Can you give us a little example of some of your work? Of my work, yeah. or maybe from the or show? Or do some of the show, whatever you prefer. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I've got um, so oh, one something I prepared. Oh, here's something I prepared. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Mel. I <laughs> <laughs> um, could just read a few stanzas from um, yeah. so Selena Tusitala Marsh, who was our poet laureate. We've had um, her on the show. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of her poems that's in the show called um, A Samoan Star Chant for Matariki. Yeah, sorry. I call forth Matsariki, the eyes of God to watch over Papatunuku and her people. I call forth wishes for the new June moon, spoken in shadow corners, steaming in palmy places. I call forth the rising of my six sisters in Ranganui's pre-dawn cloak. I call in greeting, Talofa Matali'i, Iorana Matari'i, Aloha Makaili, Kiora Matariki. I call forth the music of bone flutes, the chant, the song, the karakia, guiding the traveller's feet in heavenward eyes. Oh, mm, nice. Yeah. How do you match the poems with the performance? Because it's quite a personal thing, isn't it? And those poets that are coming and watching what you're doing, reading um, their So that was my job. So I just went, Māori poem, Māori person, <laughs> as a start. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's where I started. And then, uh, yeah, when we ran out of people, like, OK, well, you're, um, uh, some of them are, you know, obviously uh, female sort of perspectives and some of them are. So I was like, oh, let's just assign them. And, and then also I went, um, who do I, would I like to see doing mm. this poem? And there's a wicked poem in there called Songs of the Fat Brown Woman, and Mia Blake is just crushing it. Uh, you know, so it's like when that happens, when you go, oh, that's good for that person, and they do it, it's like it's excellent, it's so good. Yeah. And how much do you think poetry has changed over the years? It's, it's interesting when you, you're reading a Pacifica poem and a, and a Māori poem, there's probably a lot of correlations between the two of them, but. How has poetry changed over the years, do you think? I think, well, it'll probably mostly be about the delivery of it or the presentation of it, but I think in terms of themes, a lot of our writers, um, they speak to politics, they, they give mm. social commentary, they provide a mirror of what's going on in the now, but they also have the purpose of carrying genealogy, you know, that's how mm. we, mm. we nice. tell where we come from and where we're going, um, but it's more so the written word and then the performance of it, which spoken word really is just the evolution of oratory mm. practices that a lot of our cultures have And do you think also, because a lot of our sort of trailblazing poets are also academics, yes. you know what I mean? And so yes. now, but we have now a rise of, uh, you know, from some of your programs there, young mm. poets that and aren't, aren't coming from the universities, you know, like they yeah. are, yeah. uh, you know, speaking from a different yeah. place and coming up. So maybe that's another place too. We're Excellent. Looking sort of, for all yeah. of the good works. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be Got me excited. It's good. Oh, thank you so much for stopping by and thanks awesome. for the reading that too. Mm. Um, absolutely a pleasure to have you in the studio. Upu My Fetu plays until Saturday at Auckland's mm -hmm. Basement Theatre. You can check out their website for ticket details.